Now let's talk about G proteins. Why G proteins? Because 50% of pharmaceutical drugs that we use, medicines, they affect the G protein coupled receptors or that signaling pathway. So let's talk about G proteins because not all G proteins stimulate adrenal cyclase. They can do other things as well. Let's look at that. There's, for example, GI proteins. The ones we talked about earlier are the GS proteins, which stimulate the adrenal cyclase. GI proteins, on the other hand, inhibit adrenal cyclase. These are the GI proteins. GS proteins, which we talked about, can be activated by, for example, epinephrine, glucagon, ACTH. The G proteins that inhibit adrenal cyclase, they interact with receptor, for example, receptors for prostaglandin E or adenosine. These receptors, once they bind their ligand, they activate the G protein. This G protein, once it becomes activated, it, this, the, the alpha subunit of this G protein dissociates from beta and gamma, interacts with an adrenal cyclase and inhibits it. So adrenal cyclase, if it was making cyclic AMP molecules, now it will stop making cyclic AMP molecules. Active GI proteins have same beta and gamma subunits, but different alpha subunits. Also, it's worth mentioning that the beta and gamma subunits of G proteins, some of them, some isoforms, can also inhibit some isoforms of adrenal cyclase. Also, beta and gamma subunits of G proteins can open the calcium channels in heart cells and inhibit contraction. Another point I would like to make here is that G proteins, this system is manipulated by some pathogens. For example, Alpha subunit of cholera toxin is an enzyme that can penetrate the plasma membrane and prevent GTP bound to the G protein from going through hydrolysis. They prevent G proteins from hydrolyzing their GTP into GDP. Now remember that G proteins, they are bound to initially GDP. Once they are activated, they lose their GDP. GTP is attached to G protein, the alpha subunit of to the G protein, and the alpha subunit of the G protein then dissociates. So the alpha subunit, once it is dissociated and it is bound to GTP, has some time window in which it will convert the GTP into GDP and become inactive. During that short time window, this protein, this alpha subunit, can activate the adrenal cyclase before its enzymatic GTPase activity hydrolyzes GTP bound to it. This basically results in cyclic rise of cyclic AMP, uh, this cholera toxin. The net result is rise of cyclic AMP in the membrane proteins and a massive flow of water from the blood into the intestinal space, into the intestinal lumen, which causes diarrhea water loss, which can ultimately result in death also. Another type of G protein called GQ, this GQ protein, alpha subunit of GQ protein, rather than activating adrenal cyclase, activates another protein, another enzyme protein, which is also attached to the inner surface of the plasma membrane called phospholipase C. Phospholipase C basically mediates its effects once it has been activated it cuts a molecule of phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate this cleavage as the name suggests the phospholipase is a protein is an enzyme that can cleave a lipid molecule and this is a phospholipid molecule which we have talked about it cleaves this molecule into two groups two molecules one is inositol phosphate bisphosphate or triphosphate and the other is diacylglycerol. Diacylglycerol can basically, basically can serve as an anchor to which another type of kinase, protein kinase C can attach. This protein kinase C in order to translocate to the plasma membrane first has to bind calcium ions. The calcium ions are released from the endoplasmic reticulum 
when the other part of this molecule inositol triphosphate binds ion channels on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum this binding opens this channel calcium is released it binds protein kinase c protein kinase c has a conformational change it moves to the plasma's inner surface of the plasma membrane attaches itself to diacetylglycerol dag and it is now activated and it can mediate its effects it's also a kinase as the name suggests it will phosphorylate other proteins the other part of this story is that diacetylglycerol can is also a molecule that can be used for production of arachidonic acid which ultimately is converted into molecules that basically respond which are produced in response to inflammation cause inflammation and one of the enzymes in this is cyclooxygenase the cyclooxygenase we talked about earlier when we talked about enzymes can be inhibited by aspirin when aspirin donates its acetyl group to cyclooxygenase it terminates its effect thereby lowering inflammation which is reason for the pain now let's see how we smell or olfaction smell is one of the first senses that we develop it is very important evolutionarily also it plays a very important role in mate selection in most animals including humans there have been experiments which demonstrate that people tend to marry or like people who have a different mhc group of molecules which is a special kind of molecules we will talk about that later but that is done through olfaction or ability to smell so basically we have neurons that terminate in our nose uh, right here these neurons the tips of these neurons have special receptors mice have about a thousand different receptors for a specific odor molecule so when an odor molecule binds these g protein coupled receptors the receptor of course has a conformational change like we have seen before this conformational change is recognized by g protein which is activated the g protein exchanges gdp for gtp the alpha subunit dislocates and binds effector molecule which is adrenal cyclase as we know adrenal cyclase produces cyclic amp cyclic amp now in these cells rather than attaching and activating protein kinase a binds a ion channel receptor the ion channel receptor opens there is an influx of positively charged ions namely sodium and calcium this results in change in differential of charges along the membrane of this neuron or the neuron basically becomes depolarized when the neuron becomes depolarized it sends an electric impulse to the brain and the brain detects a particular odor molecule that it is present in the environment so this is the molecular and cellular basis of one of our key senses olfaction our ability to smell and uh, next we are going to see how we are able to see which is also done through uh, the g linked g protein linked or coupled receptors